In Christ Jesus. This is the most wonderful thing of all. This epistle is going to amplify that so much, that I will be dwelling on that in more detail later on. To me, the most important word in the New Testament, is the little preposition, in. Theologians have come up with some lulus, trying to tell us what it means to be saved. How do you define our salvation? There are words like redemption, atonement, justification, reconciliation, propitiation, and the vicarious, substitutionary sacrifice of Christ. All of these words are good, they are wonderful, but each one of them merely gives one aspect of our salvation. What does it really mean to be saved? It means to be in Christ. We are irrevocably and organically joined to Christ, by the baptism of the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians 12 12 12-13. We are put into the body of believers. We are told, He that is joined unto the Lord is one Spirit, 1 Corinthians 6 17. We belong to Him, and there's nothing as wonderful as that. There is therefore now no condemnation, to them which are in Christ Jesus, Romans 8 1. Can you improve on that? Being in Christ Jesus, is the great accomplishment of salvation. Dr. Lewis Sperry Chafer, found that the word, in, occurred 130 times in the New Testament. The Lord Jesus said, Ye in me, and I in you, John 15 4. How wonderful! We are in Christ. I can't explain it, it's so profound. Analogies may help us here. The bird is in the air, the air is in the bird. The fish is in the water, the water is in the fish. The iron is in the fire, the fire is in the iron. The believer is in Christ, and Christ is in the believer. We are joined to Him. The head is in the body, and the body is in the head. My body can't move, without the head directing it. The church, which is the body of Christ, is in Christ, the head. All the truths of Ephesians, revolve around this fact. Take time to look carefully at this epistle. I feel very keenly, that along with Romans, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, and Galatians, Ephesians should be given top priority among the epistles. I feel that these epistles have a throbbing, personal, living message for you and me today, probably as no other portion of Scripture does. They are the great doctrinal epistles. When God said to Joshua, Arise, go over this Jordan, Joshua 1-2, I know he's not talking to me, but he is giving instructions to Joshua. Yet, to me, it has an application. The Epistle to the Ephesians, is the book of Joshua of the New Testament, and it speaks directly to me in a personal way. Grace be to you, grace was the form of greeting of the Gentile world in Paul's day. The Greek word was, charis. Two men met on the street, and one would say to the other, charis. I walked down the streets of Athens, with a Greek friend of mine, who was a missionary. He spoke to several people as we went by, and I said to him, it sounds to me like you greet them with the word charis. He laughed and said, well, it's similar to it. Apparently, it's still a form of greeting today. And peace. The greeting in the religious world was peace. That is the word you hear in Jerusalem. Shalom. Paul takes these two words, which were the common greeting of the day, and gives both of them a wonderful meaning, and lifts them to the heights. The grace of God, is the means by which he saves us. You must know the grace of God, before you can experience the peace of God. Paul always puts them in that order, grace before peace. You must have grace, before you can experience peace. Therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, Romans 5 1. You see the word peace everywhere today. Generally, it refers to peace in some section of the world, or world peace. But the world can never know peace until it knows the grace of God. The interesting thing is, you don't see the word grace around very much. You see the word love, and the word peace. They are very familiar words, and they are supposed to be taken from the Bible, but often, they don't mean what they mean in the Word of God. Peace, is peace with God, because our sins are forgiven. Our sins can never be forgiven, until we know something of the grace of God. From God our Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ. The grace and peace are from God our Father. In fact, He becomes our Father when we experience the grace of God, and are regenerated by the Spirit of God. Grace and peace also come from the Lord Jesus Christ. Why didn't Paul say, they also came from the Holy Spirit? 
Doesn't Paul believe in the Trinity? Oh, yes, but the Holy Spirit was already in Ephesus in dwelling believers. The Lord Jesus was seated at God's right hand, in the heavens. We need to keep our geography straight, when we study the Bible. A great many people get their theology warped, because they don't have their geography right, and when we get that straightened out, it even helps our theology.